Hey guys, this is a teardown of an FPS 1000 HD high-speed camera. I'd like to thank the uh, donor who sent this to me uh, and let me borrow it for teardown. Uh, they'd like to remain anonymous, but uh, you know who you are. Thank you very much. This camera is pretty much a direct competitor to Kronos 1.4. It actually uses the, the same image sensor, the Lux 1310. This one doesn't run it quite as fast. This does uh, 720p at 1000 frames per second. The Kronos 1.4 does 1500 at that uh, same resolution. This camera is the result of a Kickstarter that actually ran just a few months before mine. Uh, this currently sells for, I believe, 1800 or 1900 pounds, which is about 2300 US dollars or so. It's quite a bit simpler than Kronos. It doesn't have a lot of the I.O. stuff. It just has an SD card, uh, I believe that's trigger I.O., uh, USB 3, and power inputs. You don't get much in the box, just the camera and this 35mm f1.7 lens. I have a little bit of an issue with this lens being included because it's a rather long focal length for this sensor. Uh, about a 12mm focal length is appropriate for the image sensor size in this, but there's it's hard to find those cheaply. I can understand why he chose to ship this one. This is a very, very low cost lens, something like $18. Now a few people complained that Kronos 1.4 is a little bit hard to hold, but uh, this is quite a bit worse. There's just no room uh, to put your finger here without touching the screen. That's one big complaint. I wish they had, uh, wish they in a future version would make this a little bit longer so you could just grab this properly because it is hard, easy to drop if you're trying to keep yourself from grabbing the, actually touching the touch screen. I'll leave doing a review of this up to someone else because I make a direct competitor to this so I don't think people would consider my review to be uh, impartial. And also the software that ships with is very, very basic and I can't really show all of the features that it eventually will have. But I'll give you a quick demo of it running. You have to open the battery compartment. It just uses bare 18650 cells. Got these that I got with a flashlight. I'm not sure if they're good quality, but we'll give them a try. Then this is the power button. Fans are running. Pretty quiet, actually. There we go does its weird thing at boot up and it should now be running if I could just can put the lens on I would have liked to see a CS mount rather than the C mount so you have a better option for lenses let's make sure the iris is open and something's a little bit weird with this it's something is up with the black level because because it needs a lot of light to actually see anything now if I can get this to focus, I'm going to have to set this up properly. So I had to put a different lens on. Apparently this might be CS mount, so I put a ring on just so we can focus closer, but uh, the camera is working. Due, due to the weird architecture of this using flash memory, not having DRAM, it does some, does some interesting things with refreshing. Let's see if we can do a recording. Is it running? There we go. Filling the buffer. This has a lot of record time. This has 256 gigabytes of flash and it writes the image data directly to flash so it has like a minute or two of record time. If we stop that, let's see. How do we play? Unfortunately there's no instructions with this. There we go. Play. Why aren't we seeing anything? There's an image I took earlier. Yeah, the buffer is weird. I think definitely this needs a lot of software, uh, a lot of software work before it'll be final. But I'm not going to uh, complain too much about that because products often ship with uh, basic software initially. Anyway, let's get to the teardown. Actually, I just noticed something is up with the threading on this, and I can't screw this CS to C adapter in all the way. You can see a gap, a little little gap in there. Let's see if does the lens go in all the way. Let's see. The lens is okay, so it's something to do with the, how the threading on that uh, adapter is done. What about this one? That one is fine, yeah, so it's just a problem with the threading on that particular CS adapter. After about five minutes of use, these batteries are somewhat warm, maybe 30, 35 degrees Celsius. I've heard that complaint about this camera, although I think the problem is because of these cheap Chinese batteries. 
these were just some super cheap batteries that came with a, a flashlight and it's a pretty good bet they're just small cells inside and the rest filled with sand so I wouldn't really judge anything uh, about battery heating based on these. I'd buy some good cells. And of course, what is it with Chinese manufacturers and putting the name Fire in their battery names? I guess they're secretly trying to tell us what's actually going to happen to these batteries. <laughs> the first thing that struck me interesting on this camera was the uh, these plastic parts. They're actually using custom injection molds and I wouldn't have thought that that would be economical for a product that is in this volume. Probably, I believe the Kickstarter had something like 30 sales on that order. I wasn't, wasn't figuring injection molds would be economical until the many hundreds or even thousands of parts. Although well, that might be why uh, there were rumors that uh, the creator Graham had run out of money. I can sort of understand why if he did custom in, uh, injection molds, but now that you got these molds made it'll be super cheap to make more, which is good. Another inje custom injection molded part, the bezel around the outside. Uh, let's get that off and see what's in here. So, let's see how this is built. These screws look like they go through the entire uh, thickness of the case, rather than just into the uh, into the next part. It looks like this outer ring is, say, just a piece of bent sheet metal. Yeah, these probably go into the very front, the uh, machined part that's on the front. You have to be careful here because there's probably uh, an FFC cable going to the LCD, so to carefully lift this out. How is this going to come apart? It looks like... Okay, so that comes out. Well, that's pretty easy. Okay. Yeah, so these are this, these are just wires to the fans. Okay, so those connect a little bit, as Dave Jones would say, how you doing on those fan connections, but uh, that works. So the front construction is just a simple piece of machined aluminum. That's really easy to make, I like that. Uh, yeah, the, compared to the case on Kronos, this is much simpler, much uh, cheaper to make. There's just four fans or sorry, three fans on the front for cooling. It looks like there could have been room for up to five. I suspect what happened there was, uh, it happened to me too, I hadn't anticipated how hot this sensor actually gets. Luckily I'd put a hole in the back of my board to put a, to mount a, uh, um, aluminum piece to conduct heat to the case, but in this case I think the, the board has to spread the heat out and then the fans will, will cool it. This ring should, if I understand, just pop off. Actually, it looks like we're going to have to take off that button switch cap before we can do that. There we go. Yep, that comes apart quite easily. Bit of insulation tape here. I'm thinking that must be to prevent some sort of short circuit because I can't see why you would put a piece of tape there like that. And then this whole thing is then just sort of one module, and it looks like this screws in from the front, so yeah, we've got to take the boards off now. I'm liking the simple construction in this so far. The uh, only complaint I have, main one, is the sensor between the IR filter and the sensor is open, so dust, this, these fans are going to blow dust in, it's going to get dust over the inside of this, meaning you'll have to take off the filter to clean the dust out. I would like to see in the future them add a uh, a piece of foam on here that would seal the area between the sensor and the IR filter uh, from dust. It's a pretty easy thing to do and that would solve a lot of people's problems with dust. Okay, looks like this board is, has some board-to-board -board connectors so we just have to sort of wiggle this to get it out. There we go. That's pretty simple. On this board, I guess I'll call it the sensor and acquisition board. We have, of course, the Lux 1310 image sensor. There's two Lattice Mach X02-7000 uh, FPGAs. I guess you call them FPGAs. They're sort of they sort of blur the line between FPGAs and, and CPLDs on this series, but these have 7000 logic elements, so they're relatively small FPGAs. Looks like they've divided the output of this sensor. This has 16 LVDS channels output uh, out. They've divided them up to eight going to each FPGA, and that writes the data into these uh, 
micron flash. These are 512 gigabit by 8 flash, so that's uh, 64 gigabytes each. Now this camera was specced at 256 gig, so that means there's 512 gigabytes total memory in here, so maybe that's due to some sort of uh, something to do with how it, the architecture of how it writes the data. It may perhaps have to erase one flash while it writes to the other, so it, it may need extra extra flash memory. Other than that, there's a few clocks. There's two 25 megahertz clocks. There's this Espresso oscillator, which I think is programmable. That seems to provide the clock to the sensor, which is probably going to be something in the order of 60, 70 megahertz or something in this case. And then there's just lots of power supplies. There's these uh, LT1963A 1.5 amp uh, low noise LDOs. There's some LM7332 high power op amps. Those are almost certainly used to drive uh, a few of the supplies on this chip need to both sync and source current and normal regulators can't do that so in this case they're using power op amps. And other than just a few things like regulators there's uh, this last chip is a AD5668 which is an octal 16-bit DAC and that provides a bunch of adjustable voltages that are needed for the image sensor. My sensor board has a very similar DAC on it. On the back of this board there's not very much. One small chip then uh, just a whole bunch of bypass caps. I kind of like the X shape the bypass caps end up in under the FPGAs. I wish they would have chosen better screws than slotted. I, at least something like uh, hex or uh, allen key or torx would have been nice. Okay, so LCD needs to be disconnected now. Okay, that's easy enough. I'm just going to put this down to get a bit easier access. There we go. On the main board, there's basically just a bunch of power supply stuff on this side. There's a, a linear tech uh, all-in-one buck converter. That's, uh, what is that? LMZ31... Sorry, no, LMZ31506, which is a 6 amp, uh, I think it's 5 to 14 down to uh, like 1.5 to 5.5 buck converter. A bunch of other linear supplies, same as we saw on the other board, some more of them. Uh, optos that are probably for the trigger. Uh, 25 megahertz clock, uh, another 25 megahertz clock, I think, or is this different? That one is, f focus... That one is, that one is 30 megahertz. Other than that, not too much. Just connectors to the other side. There's some very, very fine. Uh, I don't know what these are. EMI filters, possibly, or uh, clamp diodes or something on these connections to the LCD. Uh, JTAG probably for the main processor and FP DBG probably FPGA uh, uh, JTAG. And there's some options select something. Not sure what that is. And there's another, also another switch here that it can be accessed through a little hole in the side of the case, probably some sort of debug thing. And also a nice little bodge resistor probably to change the voltage or make this stable or something. And on the bottom side it's actually quite boring. There's basically just a few chips. There's an FTDI, uh, what is that? FT600, FT601Q USB 3 chip. Uh, another Lattice FPGA, the same one used on the other boards. There's uh, an analog device's uh, Blackfin DSP, that's a BF609. That's a dual core 500 megahertz uh, CPU with some video acceleration hardware for uh, video display. So this is likely send generating a video stream that's sent to this. This does its the menu overlays and then sends the video out to the LCD. And there's also f uh, 256 megs of uh, DDR, I think it's DDR2 uh, RAM for, the, for this CPU. One thing I don't notice on this is any visible attempt at length matching of the traces to the RAM. That's normally something you have to do. I don't see any of it here, or anywhere on any of the boards actually. I guess the designer didn't really think of that. Or perhaps it's not needed, but these are pretty high speed. I would figure that length matching would be a, would be a good idea. Behind the back panel we have a New Haven Display 
5 inch uh, TFT capacitive touchscreen. I'm actually really impressed with the quality of the injection molding on this. Just take the LCD out. They, they actually have uh, proper uh, brass inserts. That's really nice. Yeah, I'm really impressed. This must, must not have been cheap to do the molds for this, but yeah, once you have them, you can pump these things out pretty cheaply. I would rather power this thing off the DC input jack, but unfortunately there's no spec sheet, no uh, label anywhere on this thing, and no AC adapter was included, so I have no idea what voltage or polarity uh, this is supposed to be, so I'm going to have to just connect up to the battery terminals directly. For those of you curious, the camera draws about 1.5 amps at uh, 7.5 volts, so that's about 11 watts, which would give, using good batteries, probably about an hour and a half runtime. It looks like whoever assembled this last had a little bit of difficulty getting these screws in because there's marks all over the place around these. No wonder those batteries overheat. The current increases to 2.3 amps while recording. So now that the camera's warmed up, we actually have a pretty decent image. It seems that the problem we had earlier was just because the camera was uh, cold and the, the sensor was calibrated while it was hot because it runs so hot with, uh, without, the, without the best cooling. Hope you found this look at the FPS 1000 HD interesting. It's a really interesting camera with an interesting flash memory architecture, and I think with proper software updates, it'll be a pretty nice camera. Anyway, hope you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching.